Hello, welcome back to Super Recaps. In today's video, we will see a movie based on a true story. It's called 21 and it's an American heist drama film from 2008. Watch out for spoilers. Ben is a genius MIT mathematics student and has been accepted to Harvard but cannot pay the $300,000 per year fees. So he applied for a scholarship to cover this expense, but he is told that only one of the 76 applicants will be chosen. Despite his excellent grades and perfect exam scores, the competition will be tough. He is required to prepare an essay about himself and is informed by the director that the scholarship will only be awarded to the student that impresses him the most. Ben works alongside his closest friend Miles at a men's clothing store and gets promoted to assistant manager, earning $8 per hour. He informs Miles about the essay and how he doesn't know what to write as he hasn't had any noteworthy or interesting experiences. Ben is agitated because, despite having aced examinations, participated in extracurriculars, and sacrificed his whole life, the only thing preventing him from attending Harvard is a lack of money. They meet up with Cam and go to a bar to celebrate Ben's birthday, where they are trying to make a self-driving vehicle to win a science competition. Later, during a lecture, their professor, Mickey asks the students to describe Newton's theory. Ben tells him that Newton actually stole the concept from Joseph Rafeson, who had already made the same theory 50 years ago. The professor is impressed and gives him the opportunity for extra credit and challenges Ben with the Monty Hall problem, which Ben solves with ease. As class concludes, the professor examines Ben's most recent test score, which is 97%. The boys are playing basketball and Ben spots Jill, a girl he has a crush on. When she waves at him, he waves back but sadly, she was just waving to someone behind him. During the day, while Ben is studying, a classmate approaches him and requests him to follow him, he is perplexed but agrees. He is led into a room where some pupils are seated at a blackjack table and Professor Rosa is there too. The professor asks Ben to join the MIT blackjack team which consists of the team members, Kiana, Fisher, Choi, and Jill. They explain that blackjack is easy to beat and that they take a trip to Las Vegas every weekend and on holidays too. They need Ben because a seat on their team has been freed up due to the departure of a prior member who landed a job with Google. Ben is hesitant because he is terrified of leaving his comfort zone. Jill encourages him to join and says it'll be fun and they argue continuously, with Ben making excuses for why he can't do it and Mickey attempting to persuade him, but Ben inevitably refuses. Jill later comes to his workplace and claims she's searching for a tie. Ben tries to assist her in selecting one, but she is actually there to persuade him to join the team, claiming that he should broaden his horizons. Ben finally agrees and arrives at the blackjack club and begins studying the game. He learns about counting cards and memorizes the words supplied to each high count by the team. Afterward, at a pub, they describe each team member's duty. Kiana, Choi, and Jill are the spotters, they sit at multiple blackjack tables, only betting the minimum and keeping track of the cards. When one of the tables reaches a hot count, the player has an advantage and can win, so they notify Ben or Fisher via signals, who then fall over to the table like some drunk wealthy brats and bet high amounts. The big player should exit the table once the deck has cooled down. Later on, Ben goes to a sketchy alleyway for a test run. He enters an underground casino, where his spotters are already seated at tables. Ben takes a seat at the table when Choi gestures that the deck is hot. Choi then alerts Ben that the count is plus 17 by using the word magazine in a phrase, prompting him to place large bets. He's winning big and having fun when suddenly a sack is thrown over his head and he is hauled into a back room. What's the count? A gravelly voice continues to ask him. He pretends to not know at first, but ultimately caves in and reveals that it's plus 18. The blackjack team tells him that this was a test to see if he could keep the count under pressure, and he is now formally a part of the team. They go to Las Vegas next and upon arriving at the hotel, Mickey offers each of them a fake persona and disguise. He also tells Ben to behave as though they don't know each other, Kiana alerts Ben at the Red Rock Casino. He takes a seat and exchanges $100,000 for chips, and after tasting her drink, Kiana gasps, too sweet, signaling that the count is plus 16. Ben doubles the bet on eights and the dealer goes above 21, resulting in Ben winning, having already profited $4,000. He wins an extra $3,000 on the next round when he scores a blackjack. He continues to play at the casino on various tables, accumulating chips along the way. Fisher is astonished to see Ben winning so much. Choi gives the signal to leave, and they go. Jill wakes Ben up the next day and hands him his share. She compliments him on his performance, saying he was quick to react, wasn't afraid to take risks, and left when he was supposed to and on top of that, he made more profit than Fisher. He says he was anxious in the beginning but after some time, it felt natural. Then a team meeting is called by Mickey. Fisher arrives wasted and Mickey is enraged because he continued to play in a cold deck three times despite being warned by spotters. 
Mickey praises Ben but Fisher claims that Ben just had beginner's luck and refuses to believe that he, himself played badly, but Mickey tells him otherwise. Ben returns to his room and hides his weekend earnings of $16,700 in the ceiling panels. Unexpectedly, Miles and Kem come in, and he tries to act casual. Mike asks about his whereabouts and says that he called him 16 times. Ben creates a story about helping a cousin relocate and claims to have forgotten his cell phone. They then decide to head to a bar and get drinks. Ben notices Jill at the bar and offers to buy her a drink. His friends are in disbelief and continue to stare at them. He rushes to beg them to stop acting crazy so she doesn't panic, but they claim they're probably panicking more than her. At night, Ben and Jill take the subway together and he asks her if she only came to persuade him the other day because Mickey told her to. She states he's the brightest person she knows, which is why he's in the group and which is why she convinced him to join. This prompts him to go in for a kiss, but she pulls away. He is ashamed and begins to apologize, but she tells him to relax and that she doesn't want to risk things since they work together now, she leaves shortly after. The team spends their time in Las Vegas Valley over the next few weekends, and Ben starts to appreciate his lavish life as a blackjack player, but there's something he can't stop thinking about. He earns more money on each trip than he did at his previous work in five years. Back home, he is simply Ben Campbell, but in Las Vegas, he can be whatever he wants. It's like a dream come true and seems like it's going to last forever. Meanwhile, Cole Williams, the head of security, has been watching them, and he starts to suspect that Ben is card counting. He is also a card counter but likes to be on the side of the law. For the first time in history, Ben's life was simple, he could afford and enjoy everything he wanted. College parties were upgraded to a different league too. Fisher grows envious of Ben's success and, while drunk, sits at Ben's table and begins dropping indications that they know one other. Meanwhile, Williams is recording them and notes that Kiana only bets the minimum at the table and that Ben only enters once she sends him a signal. He rushes to catch them, but Fisher causes a ruckus, and they flee before Williams arrives. They then go to a bar and Mickey kicks Fisher off the team. He warns the others that the casino will be replacing their chips in 24 hours, so they must trade them for cash, which they are unable to do due to Fisher's idiotic behavior. Ben advises that they hire the dancers to trade the chips. Mickey praises him and says he's a genius. During the night, Jill invites Ben to her hotel room for a lovely night of making love. However, Ben's new secret activities force him to overlook his role in the science competition, which causes him to be alienated from his friends. Not only does he arrive late for a meeting with them but he also hands them the incorrect component for the project. They are upset and inform him that he is not as dedicated to the competition as them so they will continue without him. He is mentally broken on his next trip to Las Vegas. He makes a bad bet on a big hand. His emotions sidetrack him and he doesn't leave the table when Kiana signals him to. Jill comes to help him but it's of no use. He ends up losing an additional $200,000 in the process. Mickey is enraged, and even after Ben apologizes and claims that this is his first blunder, and others try to support him, Mickey still leaves the team and declares that Ben will have to recover the $200,000 he lost in some way. Ben and the remaining crew plan to keep playing blackjack without Mickey, who got a 50% share, arguing that they don't really need him. Jill is opposed to the notion, telling him that he was only doing this for Harvard, but now that he has gathered enough money, he still wants to continue. They return to the tables and win, but Mickey is waiting on the sidelines and alerts security. Williams drags Ben into a hidden room and beats him up while telling him that all casinos will start using a face recognition system so he won't be able to do this anymore. It is also revealed that William and Mickey have a long history. He used to pursue and rough him up too, which is why Mickey no longer plays himself. Ben returns to MIT and receives a letter informing him that he is disqualified for graduation because one of his courses, taught by a Mickey associate, is listed as unfinished. Entering the dorms, he discovers that his dorm room has been wrecked and all the money he'd been saving has vanished. He has nothing left. He pays a visit to Jill and apologizes to her for his previous mistakes as he doesn't want her to leave as well. On the other hand, Miles and can win the science competition without Ben. He apologizes to Miles for disappointing him and tells him the truth, and they reconcile. Ben visits Mickey and convinces him to make one last trip to Vegas before the casinos implement face recognition, all of them will use disguises and Mickey will be the other big player alongside Ben. They're at Vegas, betting high stakes, hoarding chips, and having a good time. They win a total of $640,000 but William arrives shortly. Jill gives the signal, and they run, tossing the chips into a bag and fleeing. There is a chase scene. They enter the employee's area, where Mickey persuades Ben to throw him the chips and suggests they split up. Mickey successfully escapes in a limo. He's overjoyed, believing he's gotten away with everything, but when he opens the bag, he learns the chips are fake. While they were running, Ben replaced the real chips with fake ones. 
Williams apparently has a vendetta towards Mickey since he used to get away with large sums in the past. Therefore, he struck a deal with Ben to bring Mickey back to Vegas in order to apprehend him and Ben would be permitted to take whatever they earned that day, but as they are leaving the casino, Williams shows up and asks them to hand him the money so he can retire. Ben knows he'll succeed no matter what, because of his intelligence, so he hands Williams the bag. Even though Williams took all their money, Ben's old friends are also pretty skilled at card counting, and together they make a lot of money. The scholarship director does indeed look shockingly impressed as Ben narrates this story to him. Thanks for watching, to support the channel make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and press the bell icon to get new video updates.